Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're back today in the uh, class on the feeder wagon, it's back. Um, it's finished its muck spreading holiday. Um, well actually as you saw at the end of the last video because we had to put the maxim on. Put that down so you can hear me. Um, but we're back uh, feeding up today, it's a Sunday. It's a lovely day. Uh, it's, well it's cloudy but it's quite warm. Um, so uh, yeah, sat on the feeder with no aircon again. Just going round now to put some uh, dairy nuts into the feeder. About 300 of those. Um, this is the second dairy cow load. Main dairy, the second main cow load, not dairy cow load. They're all dairy cows here. Um, but yeah, we've got someone off to buy silage in a John Deere 6R. Go, we've had quite the amount of tractors to buy silage in this season. Maxim's off power harrowing with dual wheels because um, he's finished ploughing down the road so that's all ploughed up ready for um, just park that here ready for seed I think he's seeding it now as well actually so he's got the Maxim down there with dual wheels on I'm not actually sure why he's got dual wheels on because it's not that wet down there I'd imagine it'd be less, for less compaction obviously um, but he's got that down there that's where the Maxim's at and uh, class is here on the feeder, like I've said. I'll maybe head down there and uh, show you how they're getting on later on, um, if all goes to plan. Fingers crossed it should, I'm cracking away with the loads. The only issue is they've got the old Manitou to load up seed down there. So we've only got one Manitou up here. So once I've got this load mixed up, I'm going around there to break up some straw, bed up some uh, calves, and uh, then I'll come back here for third load and dry cow load, hopefully, and then uh, we can get them all done quite nicely. So to uh, mix the feeder, obviously turn your PTO on. This is your hand throttle in the class. Turn it up to about 540 PTO speed. So you tend to mix it at 540 and put it out at uh, about 450. So obviously the faster you rev it up, the faster your uh, augers inside will spin. And uh, that's why you want to mix it at 540, because as well as mixing things, um, the little, not the little augers, the uh, augers have kind of blades on, sharper blades, so it chops some uh, ingredients as well. So especially when you put straw in and you put it on high box to make them spin even faster, uh, it chops the straw up as well. Because obviously it'll go in in blocks and then uh, the feeder will chop it up into finer, finer bits uh, and then it's fed out to the dry cows. So we've actually got, um, obviously there's a second farm we've got, you can hear the calves in the background there, I'm about, I'm about to feed them, they know the food's coming, um, but you can, uh, we've taken, the other farm's taken 100 cows, actually about 90 I think, I don't think they've taken them all yet, but there's about 90 cows gone to the other farm, so that takes an hour off milking for us roughly, they do it every year and I think it's because they put their milking cows outside, whereas we just keep them inside here. So they take a good few of them to put outside and um, so they've taken them so you've had to reduce the loads so we were mixing it up to about seven and a half ton um 7.7 something like that but now we're mixing it up to 6.8 ton and we've reduced the um concentrates and stuff like that by 10 percent um so it's a bit of a smaller load now we're putting out less um because obviously there's less cows about so it's uh it's working out quite well so Best open it back in the again. There we go. So when we drop the uh, nuts in, we give it about five minutes to mix, just so they're all mixed in nicely. Then we put it out and it, uh, it's mixed in 100%, no issues whatsoever.
Ah, good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Back this afternoon, it's currently about half four I think. We've just finished up milking here. Uh, obviously it's going a bit quicker, seeing as we've got uh, 100 cows. Gone to the other farm, I think I mentioned last video, maybe I didn't. We've uh, sent 100 cows off to the second farm because they graze them outside. Um, so it'd be better off if they're there and it also reduces our milking time by about an hour actually um, So we're all finished up now um, So I thought I'd come and give the uh, Puma a bit of a detail. He's come back uh, to fertilize all the arable ground um, And I imagine it'd be here for a few weeks actually because we're due to cut in a couple weeks And we'll be the next people that need to use the fert spinner which is currently on the back, as you can see. Um, so I'm hoping it'll just stay here. But my plan is to just give it a bit of compound stuff, like I give the maxim and hopefully revive this paintwork, which is going a bit um, faded, let's just say. It's very dusty at the moment as well, as you can see. Um, but yeah, we'll try and revive it anyways. This is where we keep our fresh water here, just at the top of the parlor. It's quite loud in here at the moment. It's on washout, uh, as you can see. It's washing the unit there. Do that after every milking, to ensure the uh, lines are just clean, uh, pushes water through it, clean it all out. It's gone to the wrong end to get the uh, unit in. There it is. Just hooked on there. Then you turn this on here. So one is just cold water, and then if you turn it to two, that's hot water. done is I've opened doors on this fur spinner so if any water gets in it'll run right out rather than just sitting in being forgotten about so as you can see don't know if you could be able to see that there but just I don't know where to show you basically there's an opening there just in there that's opened that's how you know your doors are open so the water will just go right through it won't get blocked or anything like that and um, just avoids any problems really when we next come to use the fur spinner Give it a wash, give it a wax, and uh, hopefully get it shiny again. Lions roaring in the morning sun. Searching for a longer day People feeling like the light has just come We must never stop the way Good morning everyone, you join me in the class this morning We've got the feeder on the back today I've just done the second load there um, Just mixed it up, I'm just waiting for it to mix all All mix in properly Give it five minutes at the end of putting everything in To just kind of get it all mixed in nicely so as I say, I'm just waiting in here for that. Uh, I've got the nuts, the dairy nuts ready to tip in. We've reduced it down to, so last time what we would do, we'd go around, feed the middle and the lows group, come back, put 300 dairy nuts in, go and feed one fresh group, come back, put another 300 in. Now we've reduced it to 150 each time. So there's only 300 going in overall, because obviously um, we've sent off 100 cows to the second farm to go outside and stuff like that. Um, so we don't have as many cows, so the mix is only going up to six, five, six, eight, that kind of region, um, rather than, I think it was seven, seven. Um, so it's obviously a smaller mix, reduce all the ingredients, concentrates, fat, minerals, all of that by 10%. Um, and that's how we're doing it at the moment. Class is pulling it fine. It's, uh, it's a nice little track for this, I don't mind it. And the Puma's over there which you'll have seen me clean it last video, hopefully. Um, I still haven't finished filming that video at this point of time. Um, so I need to finish that later on. Get this load out, then I'll uh, mix the next one up with you.
it's day two on the uh, cleaning job. I got the bonnet finished last night it's through there. Probably can't see that. I uh, got it waxed. I got the top wax, I've got the sides to wax, and now I've got the back fenders to do, which I'm doing now, as you can see. So that's the before. That's the after. Looking very nice. Nice and clean. I've got this bit down here to do. That's not actually too bad, but I'm going to do it anyways. Get all that done, wax it all, and then maybe wash the windows because they are absolutely filthy. So that's how I'm putting it on. Put it on four square trail in the middle, put one in the middle, then just wipe what's left off. Balance that in there. Then you just kind of dab it on like this in the area that you want to do. So I'll do it around this triangle here. Then you just kind of rub it in like that until it uh, maybe go over it three or four times and then wipe it off and it's uh, done. Kind of. You can either go over it once or twice with a second coat of that. Uh, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. It does a good job though. For the price you pay for it, it does a grand job. And you don't want to do it in the sun either because it starts to dry onto the paint and then you can't get it off. I did that before and it was a pain to get it off. About there, I think. Put that there. So it's come off really well. That bit will always come off slightly better than that top bit anyways, because obviously that's not been sitting in the sun, whereas that has, so it's a bit more faded. So I'm sure with a couple of coats, this stuff will come off fine. So that's how you do it. So I'll get this bottom bit done, this bit here, and now uh, that side, maybe go over that again. Get all of this side done, wax that, wax that, wax that, wax that windows. Then in the parlor, I think. Just look at this beacon light here, and as you can see, it comes out the bottom of there and plugs into that socket there. Um, and it's the same on the other side, so this tractor's only got one beacon. So if I show you the other side, you can see, obviously there's no beacon there, but there's brackets to fit them onto. So you can see it screws onto that bottom bracket there. But there is a plug to plug the beacon into, just there. So if any of you know in the comments, would the wiring already be in that plug? So I could literally just buy a bracket and a beacon, and plug it in and it would work. Or would it have to be wired? Um, I would imagine the wiring's there, but I'm not entirely sure, because I was looking. And you can... Um, you can buy a beacon bracket and a beacon and the wire. So it'd be really easy and handy to just put it on there, get the beacon and plug it in, would work. Or does it need to be wired? Um, if any of you know, just put down below. It'd be much appreciated because I would like to get a second beacon on here. It'd be quite nice, I think.